In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With upright heart he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. He commanded the skies above and open the doors of heaven. And he rained down on them manna to eat, and gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate the bread of the angels. He sent them food in abundance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With upright heart he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, 
that we may be nourished unto life everlasting through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the 16th chapter of Exodus, beginning at verse 2. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what we are, or rather, for what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, Manna, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pardon me. The epistle for the eleventh Sunday after Pentecost is the epistle according to Saint, uh, the epistle to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying, he ascended, 
what does it mean, but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into, or rather, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children forced, or rather tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with, with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, You are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, 
This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our most holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
our one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be blessing, mercy, and grace to you. Our text is our epistle for today. Uh, You can find our epistle in uh, the Pew Bibles on page 977 and 978. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. We can definitely say that things that are visible in the world are the things that get the most attention and also are placed in the highest level of importance in the world. And that this, of course, is true with what we can say is visible about the church. Because most of Christendom believes that the one holy Christian church, or the Catholic church, the word Catholic, of course, in this case is with a small c, is visible in the world. And, um, of course, it, they, they wonder uh, why there are so many different uh, denominations or separations, you might say. The Roman Catholic Church, of course, and that's with a Catholic, Catholic with a large C, they say that the church is very visible. It is as visible as the nation of France or Naples or any other type of human entity in the world. But then you have to say, what are visible? How does the church look like in the world? If you do a Google search about how many denominations are there in, the, in, the, in Christendom or in the Christian faith, you will find that it says that um, as of April 2023, there are over 45,000 Christian denominations worldwide, and we can say that 45,000 is a far cry from one, wouldn't you say? That is why the tale is told by one of my professors, uh, Dr. William Schmelder, and, and he was a guy that always was a stickler about details and about accuracy. He said that there was a, a Church of England bishop that uh, would uh, basically repeat the words of the Nicene Creed, I believe one holy Christian, or rather Catholic, of course, I would believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, but I sincerely believe that it does not exist. That, of course, is if you take the church only to be visible. And this idea that because it is not visible as a unity as they see, and and again, they they like to interpret Jesus' high priestly prayer where he prays that uh, his disciples would be one just like his Father is in him and he in the Father, so they, they say that Jesus' prayer is not fulfilled. This, of course, uh, is something that was dealt with by uh, our early confessors in the evangelical Lutheran denomination or the Lutheran church uh, when they confessed in the apology of the Augsburg Confession that the church is a real kingdom of God is a real entity in the world, even though it is unseen, and, and that uh, the, um, it is not a fable or something that someone wish, it, wish uh, is in existence like Plato's Republic. You know, uh, Plato, the most famous uh, dialogue that uh, Plato wrote about Socrates was his Republic, in which he talked about the ideal utopian society. Of course, if you look at the word utopia, it means nowhere. And so the confession was that the church does exist. And of course, we can't see where it, rather, we don't know who is the church, but we absolutely know where the church is. In the 
Nicene Creed that you confessed a few minutes ago. You confessed as a reality. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. The disconnect here, of course, is with all of the division that you have. Of course, perhaps the answer might be for uh, visible uh, bodies of uh, Christendom as denominations to merely say, yeah, well, the church is visible and it is one because our group is the one holy Christian and apostolic church. That, of course, is the belief of the Roman Catholic Church because uh, they don't really speak about anyone outside of the Roman Catholic Church as being a church at all. It has to have, of course, that, that unity, which is the unity of the Pope at the top of the pyramid and then all of the clergy and the hierarchy along with it. It's rather interesting that in another confession, uh, we confess that the church is more than the ministers. Of course, it's easy for other uh, denominations also to do exactly the same thing. Perhaps maybe even it might be a temptation among uh, Lutherans in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod to think that they are the only church at all as, as well. But I, at least in, in my 42 years of ministry, I never heard any pastor or any, uh, any Lutheran say that they thought that they were the only true church, although you probably heard the joke when of the angel that met a new arrival in heaven and took that person uh, on a, a tour of heaven, and they noticed that there was a group of people that were kind of uh, separated to themselves, and, and they uh, didn't know anyone else who, were, who was in heaven. And then the new arrival asked the angel, well, well who are these folks? And the angel said, they're Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Lutherans. They think they're the only ones up here. And so, of course, you can see that that's a possibility for people to claim that their visible organization is the one church. And doing that, anybody that does that is very much in danger of making their group not a part of the church, but a sect in, 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 in which they are a cult, in which they say that their visible denomination or organization is the church. Of course, the also the idea for the church is, uh, like um, some of these uh, very liberal scholars and, and theologians, like uh, one at the beginning of the 1800s, Schleiermacher, uh, Friedrich Schleiermacher, we learn about him in the seminary quite a bit, uh, he's sort of the father of all of the horrible theology that came out of the 19th century. He said that the church is an organization that human, that people have established and that they are members of by their own decision. In a sense, what it would be like is if it were like, uh, he, it would be like maybe the... Um, the Lions Club or the Elks Club or, or some other organization where, where people established it maybe uh, hundreds of years ago and they decided to become members of it. That is certainly not the understanding of the, holy, the one holy Christian and apostolic church. Jesus spoke about the church when he said to Peter, you are Petros, a little stone, and upon this Petra, this rock, which was himself, he founded the church upon himself because there is no other foundation that can be laid than that which is laid, namely Jesus Christ. I will build my church. So it is God who builds his church in the world. But also Jesus taught us something else about the church. He said about the kingdom of God, which for us is, is something which, which um, 
de- defines the church of God in the world, or we speak about it being God's or Christ's kingdom of grace. He says that the kingdom of God does not come with observation for people to say, oh, here it's coming or there it's coming. For the kingdom of God is within you. Of course, there are some theologians that say that uh, that, that makes it into a real subjective type of thing where the church is, again, maybe not something that is so real that it is something in your heart. But nevertheless, it is your unseen and invisible faith that the Holy Spirit creates within you by hearing the external word of the gospel and by receiving the holy sacrament, the washing of water with the word, holy baptism by which the Lord makes disciples of all nations, that you are brought into the church. God builds it and puts you into it. And the church is most certainly invisible. Now those are, there's, again, they, they don't, people do not want to go away from the visibility of everything. But we must remember as the Holy Apostle teaches in another epistle where he says that the things that are seen, the things that are visible are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And the church is most certainly eternal because it is established by the Lord Jesus Christ as his bride. There are not 45,000 churches, but one church, and it is invisible, and it is the bride of Christ. As we sang in the beautiful hymn of the day, from heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride, and with his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. And so, of course, it is the Lord Jesus who by his person, his life, death, and resurrection that he redeems and blesses his church. Through baptism, he makes, he cleanses his church and makes it a glorious church that he will uh, put on display on the last day. Look at this is my beloved. It's important in this particular chapter of Ephesians uh, and, there, and there's just a lot of gold to mine here, so I encourage you to study this epistle, where it speaks especially about our Lord's ascension into heaven. This, of course, happened 40 days after he was raised from the dead, after he gave instruction to the disciples, after he had completed his work of redemption, where he suffered and died for your sins on the cross, where he cleansed, um, or rather, where he made atonement for all sins, that then he might fill all things. And of course, that refers to Christ according to his human nature, that in a very special way that he would now take on the role as the head of his body, the church. And as its head, there is only one body, as it says in our text. And it's rather interesting in, 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 um, in discussing this particular passage, there's a quotation from the Psalms where it says that when he ascended on high, he led, uh, uh, he led captive a host of captives. But the a Greek says that he led captivity captive. In, in that particular sense, it, it, and then he, it also, there's a reference to Christ's descent into hell, which he did on Easter morning, the purpose of which to proclaim to the devil and all of those that were in hell that he had won the victory over death and damnation, but also leading the devil and all of the forces of evil captive as well, so that they might not have their way with his people, the church, on the world. He gave gifts to men. And the gifts, of course, he gives to the church are, are not merely uh, material, or, or, you know, if you speak about material, things are physical, but people. You know, I think that's something that's very important for us to see, that 
gifts, our gift to one another, the greatest gift that you can give to someone else is yourself in love. So the Lord also gives to the church and and the manner in which he governs the church by his Holy Spirit is through the gifts, uh, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, and teachers who are commissioned to uh, uh, set the saints in order for one thing, for the next thing, to do the work of ministry, the ministry of the Word, the ministry of the sacraments, to build up the body of Christ, because it is through these external means, as through instruments, that the Holy Spirit gathers a people of God together and incorporates them into the one holy Christian and apostolic church, so that we are no longer like children tossed around by every wind of doctrine. It's important for us as as we are the church to pay special attention to the written word of God. If people in this world as Christians complain that uh, that there are so many divisions, then if they would simply recognize what is human doctrine as opposed to what is in the Holy Scriptures, which are certainly clear and the uh, instrument of the Holy Spirit, then there could be a lot more uh, unification as far as an outward fellowship or concord. That same professor, uh, Professor Schmelder, said that there is a difference between unity and concord. Unity is always there because what Jesus prayed for in his high priestly prayer most certainly came true. The church is one. It is one and it is present here where the gospel is proclaimed and where the sacraments are administered. But then there is the hope and the prayer of concord among Christians. And by the grace of God's Holy Spirit as they study and they treasure, they uh, keep his precious word and confine their belief and their confession to that word and its teachings, that they will have a greater concord in the world. And that, of course, is the manner in which the Lord works among us, for Jesus is present here in his gospel, in baptism, as we will have a baptism right after our service today, and also in the precious supper in which he feeds us with his true body and blood and shows himself by all that he does to be the bread of life that those who come to him may not hunger and those who believe in him will never thirst. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our offertory.
us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised, give us confidence to trust in you and to look to your hand to provide all that we need for this life and for the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, your Son gives us the office of the ministry that your people might be equipped to serve and be built up into his one body. Remember in your compassion all who speak your word. Give them faithfulness and honesty in their teaching that your children would be freed from all deceit to speak your truth to one another in love, growing up in every way into Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant us true unity in the faith. Preserve us in pure doctrine. Grant harmony in our congregation, district, and synod, and bestow on us charitable hearts that put the best construction on what we see and hear. And as we are mindful both of the invisible true church, the one church, and also the uh, external confession of the church, in, and as it, it is in this world, we ask your blessing upon the saints here present in our Redeemer in Overland. Of course, we recognize the fact that this local congregation, too, is a part of the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We thank you for the ministry that has been given to this church, the ministry of uh, preaching the gospel and administering the sacraments of our preschool, its directors, teachers, volunteers, and, and the congregation which is uh, so helpful in uh, continuing that ministry. We also would thank you too about the loving hearts that provided for uh, the school supplies for River Road School and was able to um, do every or provide every need that was requested through the loving uh, generosity of your people. We pray for the music ministry of this congregation as well as the fledgling uh, St. Louis Christian Music Center that we will um, inaugurate this fall. We pray that you would bless the directors and teachers and, and also that you would move the hearts of many people to come and, and to learn to praise you and give you praise in music. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God and Father of all, enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, and patience, that we would hear with one another in love and be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty One, you establish civil authority in the world, and as you give it, it is to be a blessing that we should, we are exhorted by the the Holy Apostle to uh, pray for kings and for all who are in authority. So we pray for all those who are in authority in our own nation and in the world that we may live a godly and peaceable life in this world. Keep them honest. Keep them concerned to serve the people that they rule over. According to your good and gracious will, for you do all things well, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the sick and hospitalized, especially uh, Pastor Stefan Hoopert, who is in Mercy Hospital and who has undergone dialysis. We pray that you might spare his life, that you might grant that uh, he might be sustained uh, in his life. Bless his uh, wife, uh, Jennifer, as she seeks to be with him and care for him. And, and be with, with him during these difficult times as we pray for all of those others that are laid on our hearts, for uh, Pat Westoff, for Daniel, Jim, Tracy, John, Gail, Carol, Josh, Sherry, Teresa, Michelle, Ava, and Sophia, Elizabeth, Paula, Ruth, Connie, Margaret, Kathy, Phil, 
David and Elsie, Cheryl, Martin, Kathy, Mark, David, Jim, Carrie Ann, Joseph, Katrina, Robert, Alexandria, and Juanita, Don, Perry, Michael, Andrea, Sarah, Celia, Tom, Bernadette, George, Bonnie, Jane, uh, J- also for Jane too, because she too is in the hospital, uh, Ruth Ann, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Sharon, Ron, Ruth, Mel, Sharon, Dan, Billy, and Libby. Provide doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals to care for those who need help and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come as a people tossed to and fro by the manifold changes of this mortal life. Bless us as we continue to uh, follow our pilgrimage in this life. And grant that we may, by the grace of our dear Lord Jesus Christ and by the new creation of the Holy Spirit, find ourselves on the farther shore, appearing with all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns for you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we continue with uh, the uh, service of the sacrament, the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you in a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go forth with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. visitors this morning and hope that you will join us once again for worship. Please enter your names in the attendance books that are on the side of the pew that is right next to the center aisle. And for members too, if you haven't registered for communion online, we ask that you would enter your names uh, in the attendance books. Uh, we'll, we have a, a baptism uh, are rather two baptisms that will take place here after the worship service. And so keep the two baptizans in your prayers, uh, Richard and Stevie, who will be baptized in the name of the triune God. Uh, tomorrow is the um, church council meeting uh, at the regular time of 7 o'clock. Also on Tuesday, we have the uh, ladies' Bible study, Take Heart, uh, in the Fellowship Hall uh, at 6.30. Uh, and uh, for at least for the night of uh, Thursday to Friday, I will be in Columbia attending a circuit visitor uh, training event there. But you can always reach me um, through that, the regular phone number, which is my cell number. So call me uh, any time that you require me. I'm, I'm only maybe a little bit farther than I am uh, where I live at this time. So uh, we hope that, hope that you, uh, you would um, still feel free to contact me whenever you wish. Uh, the, uh, we're going to have our float trip this Saturday, which is a really great, exciting thing. It's, it's really a, a wonderful event. Um, 
there is, uh, if, if you want information, you can text me uh, asking me wh where it would be. Uh, we will be meeting down in Steelville at, uh, what's, uh, Nathan, what's the name of that place? Uh, uh, used to be Fagan's uh, Adventure Outdoors uh, between 9 and 9.30 so that we can get on the river. And it's really a clean river from there. There's a lot of wonderful springs that feed the river and, and God willing, it'll be safe, uh, a, an exciting event for our congregation. Uh, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of Laura Lubke, give thanks to all of you for uh, how generous you were in providing for um, River Roads who requested uh, you know, school supplies, that they had a, uh, had a long list and, and our congregation was able to provide everything that they requested by the grace of God. And so God bless you all, thank you, and, and may you have a good week. I'll, I'll go and do that one.